All right, day 14 without a House speaker. And Republicans anticipate a full House vote tomorrow for speaker. They're supposed to meet in conference this evening. The nominee, Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan, is believed to be short of the necessary votes to obtain the ga gavel, but they're going to move forward with vote anyway, which is different than what we saw last week with Majority Leader Steve Scalise, who did not press for a floor vote without having reached the 217 votes. So where do things stand? Joining me now to discuss this and much more, Congressman Keith Self. He serves on the House Foreign Affairs Committee and the House Veterans Affairs Committee. He represents the 3rd Congressional District of Texas. Congressman Self, welcome back to Washington Watch. Great to see you. Good to see you, Tony. Thank you. So where do we stand on a House speaker? Well, I will tell you, Jim Jordan is making great progress today. As you say, there are some holdouts, but uh, Jim has, has converted several of those today, a handful. And uh, frankly, I believe that either tomorrow or the next day, we will have Jim Jordan as the Speaker of the House of Representatives. Now, will they go to the floor for a vote uh, before reaching that uh, magic number of 217? Uh, yes, they will. Uh, Jim has already said that we are going to the floor probably on Tuesday about noontime. Uh, and that's the way the current rules read. Uh, there was an amendment in conference uh, that said we would reach that number in conference before we went to the floor. It was defeated. So Jim is operating under the current conference rules. OK. You know, one of the things I'm hearing out there, it's, it's kind of astounding that there's some discussion or chatter about a compromise with Democrats among Republicans. I can't imagine Republicans would join and elect a Democratic speaker. No, that's not going to happen, Tony. Uh, that's media chatter. Uh, I think the uh, uh, those people that would even consider it to know that that would be the death knell uh, of their campaign, of their uh, uh, their time in Congress, uh, that is not going to happen. I, I want you to put that one to bed. Yeah, I, I, that was a little far-fetched. I'm going to switch topics here. America's biggest security threat remains its porous southern border. I mean, you know that. You're from Texas. Recently, two right. Iranian citizens were apprehended at the border, and they're raising red flags. Uh, th that they posed a significant security threat. What do you know about that? Well, I, will, I know that we have thousands of military-aged foreign males coming across our southern border. Uh, we've talked about the Chinese often, but uh, the numbers from the Middle East, the various countries, are also thousands. So it is a concern, because if we catch two, how many got away? I mean, we, all we know are the numbers we catch. We have no idea of the gotaways, and I will tell you, probably in the thousands of military-aged uh, males. Well, and, and, and we get a little taste of what we saw last Friday, where we saw protests across the country, pro-Hamas protests. We saw these uh, demonstrations on college campuses. And, and Senator Marco Rubio is calling on President Biden to cancel visas for, national, uh, for foreign nationals supporting Hamas in the wake of these uh, horrific attacks on our ally Israel. Um, I, I, this look, I don't think we have to let guests stay in our country who are who are cheering the brutality that was conducted by Hamas on our friends. Uh, Tony, this is just another example of the Biden administration enforcing the law. The law is already on the books. If you are a foreign alien and you do these things, then you will be ex uh, uh, expelled from our nation. You will have your visa revoked. Uh, the law is already on the books. The Biden administration, as the southern border, as many things, they simply need to enforce the law that we have today. And I think that's what Senator Rubio is calling on him to do. Do, do you anticipate the Biden administration doing anything to, uh, to remove these foreign nationals from our country? No, given the fact that there are Iranian sympathizers at high levels of the Biden government, I have no expectation that they will enforce the law. You brought that up. I talked about it last week. You got a couple minutes. You're on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. The, the Biden administration appears to have been infiltrated by Iranian sympathizers, to put it nicely. What do you know about that? Well, there are two people whose names are thrown around. Uh, 
One is still with a very high security clearance, is the chief of staff for the assistant uh, secretary of defense uh, for special operations. And I will tell you, that is not an area that we need to have an Iranian sympathizer uh, occupying. Uh, there is another one who is actually under investigation by the FBI, whose security clearance has already been revoked. Uh, so these are two known Iranian sympathizers. And uh, I think that uh, we need to be pushing for the Biden administration to expel Iranian sympathizers from their administration. There is no reason for a known sympathizer to have a high security clearance in the administration. Uh, it, it shocks me that they can even get a security clearance. I mean, I've, I had a clearance when I was at uh, the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom, and to get a security clearance, you've got to go through so many hurdles. I cannot believe with those types of connections and relationships they could even get one. Well, I don't know how they do either. I, for my TSSCI and even higher clearances that I held in the Pentagon, uh, the pages and pages and pages of personal data that you fill out, I think the form is a 298, uh, it is very intrusive. There is no way that they should be holding these types right. of clearances. No and, way. And in, in any conversation you have with a foreign national, you've got to report it. I mean, it is it is quite, uh, quite extensive. Well, Congressman, I want to thank you for joining us and giving us an update today. Keith, always great to see you. Great to see you, Tony. Thank you so much.